So, we heard from content producers, as we call them in the new media world. We've heard from academia. And now we're going to go to the other side of the house, the business side. Some of you would call it the dark side. The dark side. And I have seven words for you. Nobody eats till somebody sells something. Let me say that again. Nobody eats till somebody sells something. And then there was Sheila. Now, Sheila, you know that you and I are the last ones between them, the bar, and a hell of a party. So I'm going to be brief. How about you? <laughs> Um, I was going to go through my whole affiliation with her over the last 20 years, but I fact-checked the, fact -checked it, checked the program. It's mostly right, her progression, and it's impressive, as I'm sure you will agree. But, um, you know, in the media world these days, it seems like we like to do a lot of lists. Lists of things. So I'm going to give you the five things that make Sheila so special. Number one, family first, both by blood and by association. Absolutely. I'm not making this crap up. By blood or association, it doesn't matter. Her friends, her co-workers, her clients love her. She's extremely kind and caring, real, genuine, honest, and you can always count on her. And many of her family members are here tonight. Can you all stand up? please, and be recognized. Number two, relationships. She's a master at developing and nurturing and sustaining successful relationships, whether they're personal or whether they're professional. Our customers absolutely love Sheila. And look how she's maintained the relationships with her alma mater, CMU. It's never left her, and it's always on her mind. And it's a real credit, Sheila, to your passion towards CMU. A love of learning, both at CMU and her work experiences. How many years have you been in media sales? 37 years. That's impressive. <laughs> Got to tell you, it's a contact sport. So 37 years is pretty impressive. Um, and um, we're very, very proud with Sheila because many of us have been in the newspaper industry for a very long time. She has not only embraced, but she's come really, really experienced and successful in the world of digital media. And very, uh, very impressive. Uh, Sheila is, number four, a very hard worker with very high quality results. She's always probably the first one in the office when she's not working remote or the last one to, to leave the office. So a very hard worker, except when one thing is about to happen. Her hair appointment. Do not get in her way. If she's got a 5.30 hair appointment, she's done. Bye-bye. And number five, Sheila loves to have fun. Great sense of humor and a lot of fun. And um, I think we all know that. So, family first, relationships, <coughs> learning, being a hard worker, and having fun. There's a couple other things I just want to close on that you may not know about Sheila Reinecke. She loves being a grandmother. Chaplin's kids call her Nana. She loves being Nana so much, she's going to be retiring next spring so that she can spend more time with her grandkids. Was that next spring or 2025? I couldn't remember. <laughs> Was it next spring? Okay. Her team and co-workers absolutely adore her, will miss her, as will my wife Rebecca and I as well. And oh, one more thing. Ken, you're a lucky man. You know that. Sheila loves to do yard work and mow the grass. Hey, Tommy, can you uh, uncover that cardboard right there. This is a little tribute from her co-workers and all of us. It's kind of a big card. That's a picture of 
Silver Shield with the Superman S on her riding lawnmower, surrounded by all the congratulations from her friends and co-workers. Come on up, Sheila. Congratulations. You're an exceptional ambassador to CMU and Living the Eyes. we went to meet with Macy's after drinking several hours prior to that and that was, it was a real moment. <laughs> Thank you Steve for those kind words, I appreciate it. And, I, and I, he actually took my first line as, I know the only thing standing between you all and a bar or casino is me, so I will be great. <laughs> I want to first recognize my fellow honorees, John Barnes. John was my first editor at CMU and I got to work with him later at the Grand Rapids Press. Professor Hartman, Fred Human. And Randy, congratulations. It's really an honor to be in such a great company. <laughs> to be very honest, those that know me best know that I was very um, nervous about being here today. I was a little more intimidated writing my, my remarks for this evening, knowing that my fellow nominees are accomplished writers. And well, I'm not. I'm a salesperson. However, I'm truly humbled by this honor, so here it goes. When I graduated high school and began thinking about what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, I started thinking about the newspaper business. My father, who passed away three years ago, worked at the Detroit Times before entering the service. I remember one of his most prized possessions was a watch. That watch was given to him by the staff of the Times before he entered the Army. He shared such great memories of his time working at the newspaper, it was evident that part time job left a lifelong impression on him and in turn on me. Upon beginning my college career at CMU, I registered for my first journalism class. I quickly realized my strengths did not lie in writing a great story, especially on a deadline. It was then I realized reporting was not going to be in my future. I spent the next two years completing general education courses while trying to discover my life's passion. One day during my sophomore year, I saw a Hub Wanted ad in the Sea of Life. They were looking for advertising salespeople to work at the newspaper. I figured I saw ads in high school at the yearbook, so I could probably do this. I was pretty confident I would succeed at the Sea of Life. I applied and got the job. This would give me the opportunity to work in a newspaper to see if this is really something I wanted to do when I grew up, or graduate, whichever came first. <laughs> I realized quickly there was nothing part-time about my job at CM Life. This was for real. We covered breaking news on and off campus. We sold ads to local and regional news um, businesses. We built for those ads. We spent Sunday nights at the morning sun proofing pages and did whatever it took to get that paper out three days a week. It was through that experience that I met some of my lifelong colleagues and friends. Many are here tonight. Terry Foster, I couldn't have made it through the last couple years without you coming up and saving me. I'm with you. <laughs> Leanne and Mike Smith, oh my God, worked with us at CM Life and with my sister at the Wayside. <laughs> <laughs> we all know we spent a lot of time there. <laughs> Kathy Simon, I don't know, I haven't seen Kathy here tonight, but she's not. Kathy Simon gave me my first real job and then helped me so much when I did my first internship at the Grand Rapids Press. Tori Rule, we've been at the same paper for many, many years. And the list goes on and on. I credit my two years at CM Life for opening the door to my career. The work I did in the baseball, the basement of Ansbaugh, or Anspatch, to my family is not from Central. <laughs> if you were a freshman or a guest, you didn't know how to say the word, admitting. That real life experience gave me the opportunity to get my first job at a real newspaper. It's a small paper, it's called the Atlantic Press. Early on in my career, I realized that newspaper is the voice of the community. Our reporters, our photographers, shine a light on the good and the bad in our markets. Through their stories, they tell what's happening in our, in our communities, and that is vital today and going forward. If there was injustice, the newspaper reported on it. Most times, when those injustices came to light, there was conversation. And many times those conversations led to change in our communities. 
I am proud to have contributed in my own way to that mission. And I congratulate you all. Keep doing that. I have been blessed to spend the last 35 years of my career in the same company. At the Muskegon Chronicle I'm Live, I found an extended family. Many of my coworkers became my family. Many were there when I had my daughter, Jacqueline. Tara Maples, you were there when I had Jacqueline. And in some cases, I was there when they had theirs, Todd and Aaron Betty, when they had Carter. Now I have a few people I must recognize. Roger Morgenstern. Roger? Attention, please. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, for nominating me for this honor, but for most of all, for you and Michelle, for being my friends for the past 30 years. I love you guys. for her support in allowing me to come back to CMU and talk to her students. That opportunity routinely left me feeling re-energized and passionate about what I was doing. Teresa Stevens. Teresa, for the beautiful letter that you wrote for my nomination, I appreciate it. We almost can, and we love you, and you're part of our family. Cindy Fairfield, what can I say? <laughs> First, thank you for the beautiful letter you wrote me and the committee, but most of all, all, for the years that we worked together. I could not think of anyone else I would have wanted to work side by side with during those years as a director of the Muskegon Chronicle. We worked hard, we played hard. <laughs> Probably played harder. <laughs> Jim Wojcik. Jim, so many, of, so many of us owe you a debt of gratitude. There are literally thousands of students out there who owe you. For those who are not here today, let me just say for all of us, thank you, Woach. <laughs> Steve Westfall. <laughs> Where do we get back to the office? <laughs> Steve, thank you for your letter of support, for the nomination, your beautiful introduction, and for the opportunities you've given me these last 10 years. I'm especially grateful for the opportunity to transition back to working directly with the clients. As you know, and I've always said it, for me, that has always been the best part of the job. It means a lot to me that you and Rebecca are here tonight as you're celebrating the 40th anniversary tomorrow. Here in Naples, Dawn Robbins, Yvonne Reams, who I've worked with over the years, your friendship and support means the world to me. You are my family. <coughs> Finally, to my family that are mostly here tonight, my sister Colleen, who was in social work and we graduated on the same day at CMU. I couldn't have had that job or taken that job back at CM Life back in the day if you hadn't let me use your car, because I didn't have one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> my brother Tommy and his girlfriend Michelle, my brother has always been there to support me as everyone in my family, but he's the one that reminds me that a sense of humor can get me through anything. My niece Taylor, who's now teaching here at CMU in the athletic training program, your excitement is contagious. Share it with your students always. My beautiful daughter, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, who has kept me on my toes from the day she came here. She is following in the family footsteps at the Grand Haven Tribune. I love seeing her passion for developing great promotions for local businesses. I'm very proud of you. My sons, Dan and Tim, who cannot be here tonight as they are working for our family business, so my husband, Ken, could be here to join me in the celebration. My son-in-law, Brett, who's back at the pool with my three grandchildren. <laughs> so that Jack would be here tonight. I could not have picked better sons. And finally, to my husband, Ken, thank you for your unwavering support. You have been there over the years, being there, helping me, picking me up when I fell down. I could not have done all that I've been able to do without your continued encouragement and support. So again, thank you all for this honor, and let's go to the bar. Yeah.